Hello guys and welcome to the 10th episode of the Architects 3D Beam Mega Build. A big size and industrial quality 3D printer that I'm designing and building step by step from scratch along this series here at Architects 3DP. This project is only being possible thanks to my Patreon supporters that help me keep going month to month and the amazing sponsors of the Architects 3DP Mega that you can see on screen. In the last episode, we started the assembly of the X-axis of the 3D printer. Putting together the 40x40 40 40 aluminum profile with the Hewin railing, we also installed the extruders in place, made of the cable wirings, and finally installed the cable chains, getting at the end of the video this amazing result. What we're going to do today is to continue with the assembly of the X-axis of the printer, installing the two 3D printed ends of the axis that I have right here, and all the components that we'll need to install on them that I will show you in a few seconds. But before starting, be sure to click here in the subscribe button and to ring that bell to be notified when new cool stuff is uploaded. If you do it, it will help me creating new content and growing the channel to reach more special viewers like you. Alright guys, so once you are subscribed to the channel, and make sure you are, I'm gonna continue with the assembly of the X-axis from where I left it. Here we have both ends of the X-axis that will be mounted on top of these two carriages like so. And we'll move along the Y-axis thanks to two more hewing carriages. We'll also install the tensioning mechanism that will be mounted here and here, as well as these belt clamps and more components that I'm going to show you later. As you can see, we will install this piece here in the left end of the axis and this other one will be the right end. I attached some bubble plastic to prevent the extruder carriages coming out of the hewing railing, so I'm going to remove it and next step will be to mount the 3D printed end in place just like so. Since it's quite tight, I'm going to use a nylon hammer to insert it in place more easily. However, after a few minutes trying to insert it in place, I figured out that I couldn't insert it anymore, and it was because we have here the head of one of the bolts holding the hewing railing that hits with the 3D printed part in this point. So I had to cut it with a hacksaw to be able to insert it in place. Anyways guys, you don't have to worry about that. Since I have already fixed the 3D model and you won't have this problem in the STL you'll have available to download. Alright, so once I cut this extra part and assembled everything together, this is the result we got, guys. As you can check, the left extruder can move very smoothly. As well as the right extruder does too. We have both ends installed in place. As you can see, a very exciting result. And both extruders can move very smoothly thanks to the hewing coverages and railings provided by Dam and CNC. I'm gonna let you now with a few cool shots of what we have built so far, and we will continue in a few seconds. Alright, so now I'm going to continue with the assembly of the X-axis of the Architects 3DP Mega. And the next we're going to do is to install some more components on the axis. We'll install two NEMA 17 stepper motors that will move the two extruders, then a couple more hewing carriages that will install in these 3D printed skates, and finally the belt tensioners and a couple more components we'll see later. These are going to be the components we're going to start with. So first step will be to pick up the hewing carriage and the 3D printed skate, and we're going to put them together. Now, one more time, we have to pay attention to the orientation of the carriage, since we'll have to orient this metallic side to the interior of the printer, and for that it will need to be aligned to the thin wall of the 3D printed skate, just like so. To fix them in place, we'll need 4 and 4 by 12 mm bolts, will fasten using the allen key. Since the bolts I have here are larger, what I'm going to do is to trim them down to 12mm using the hacksaw. Let's 
I'm going to try it in place to see if it fits now. And as you can see, it does perfectly. So I'm going to continue cutting all the balls down to 12 millimeters, making a total of eight balls for both skates. Once we have all the bolts with the proper 12mm length, what we're going to do is to insert all of them in place and fasten them making the hewing carriage and the skate a solid piece. Here we have one. And that was the second one. The next components we are going to install into the assembly are going to be the two NEMA 17 stepper motors and to install them we'll need four M3W washers and four m 3 by 10 mm bolts for each of the motors, making a total of eight washers and eight bolts. So I'm going to start with the right end and the first step will be to insert the NEMA 17 stepper motor in place. Pay attention to the orientation of the cables since they should face to the outside bottom of the axis. Then we'll start inserting the M3 bolts with the M3W washers in place. And once all are in, we'll start fastening them in cross order just like so. That was the last one, and as you can see, now the stepper motor is strong and stable in place. We'll do the same with the left end. So first the motor, then the bolts, and finally fasten all of them till the motor is strongly fixed in place. Here we go! Next we're going to install the belt tensioners. For what we'll need the next components. For each tensioner we'll need two M3 nylock nuts and an M3 by 40 mm bolt and also an M3 by 25 mm bolt with another nylock nut and two M3W washers together with the GT2 idler bearing that will be mounted here inside the 3D printed tensioner bracket. To assemble it, we'll pick up a 40mm M3 bolt and we'll insert an M3W washer on it. Then we'll put it inside the 3D printed tensioner bracket and we'll tighten an M3 nylock nut all the way through like so. Now we'll just do the same with the other 3D printed tensioner bracket. And once we have both of them ready, what we're going to do is to install the belt idler in place, that is going to be right here. But before, we'll insert the M3 by 25mm bolts from one of the sides, insert the washer in place, then carefully insert the idler, and finally you'll have to fit another M3W washer on the other side of the idler, so the bearing can spin perfectly. You can use a smaller Allen key to help inserting it. Once done, we'll close it with an M3 nylock nut, as you can see here, tightening everything in place. But remember that the bearing needs to be able to spin, 
so don't put too much pressure, and yeah, much better. We'll insert the idler in the other tensioner as we did before. First the bolt, washer, idler, washer, and close everything with an M3 nylock nut. Here we go. Once both tensioner brackets ready, we'll insert them in place just like so. And we'll put the nylock nut that we're going to insert just a little bit, and we will tighten later on to tension the belt. Now as always, same steps in the other side. To finish, one of the last steps will be to install the GT2 pulleys on the NEMA 17 stepper motors and tighten the two little screws that will hold them in place. So we'll insert it and we'll tighten first one, all the way through, and then the second one, till it's perfectly fixed in place. As you can see, I'm using 6mm pulleys, but I have bought 5mm ones that will fit perfectly on these NEMA 17 stepper motors, that's something you need to have into account. I'm going to install the left pulley as well, following the same steps than before. Here we go! As you can imagine, we'll replace this pulley as well. The last step for this episode is going to be, since I forgot to do it before, to insert the balls on each of the ends of the axis. My aluminum profile came per machine from Synerges, so the only thing we'll need to do is to insert the two M8 bolts right here on each of the ends through the hole included in the 3D printed end. As you can see, I included a hole in the design that will allow you to pass the Allen key through and tighten the bolt. And here we go, guys! That was actually the last step we'll need to do in this episode, guys. We can say that we have the x-axis of the Architects 3DP Mega almost complete. And I'm saying almost because we still have to install the GT2 belt that is gonna move each of the two extruders. And we'll go from the GT2 pulley mounted on the motor all the way through to the other end of the axis where we have the tensioner idler passing through the extruders where we'll attach both ends. But we're going to do that, guys, in a future episode since I haven't had more time this week to finish it. Remember that as always, you will find all the STL files linked down in the description, but you will also find the link to the Rhino file that I have in progress, as well as the complete bill of materials of the Architects 3DP Mega, where you will find the links to buy all the necessary products that we used in each of the different episodes. Finally, I just wanted to ask you to subscribe to Architects 3DP if you still haven't, hit the like button, leave a comment and share this video so more people will be able to enjoy with this project. And as always, a special shout out to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. If you want to join them and support the channel as well, you can do it navigating to patreon.com slash architects 3DP, clicking here in the top right corner or in the link in the description. Remember that becoming a Patreon, you will get access to all the necessary components for this project, as well as all the past projects in the channel, and much more rewards that you can check in our Patreon page. Ok guys, so as always, see you in the next video!